G'day everyone and welcome to a really dry Australian summer where it's bore well season. In today's video we'll share an overview of what's involved in drilling a new bore well, how much a project like this can cost and also some of the challenges that you can run into when looking for groundwater. I can hear it, can you hear it? Oh, 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 oh. coming. Oh. Is it going to spray me in the face? No. Woohoo! <laughs> To find a suitable location for a bore well, most drilling rig operators recommend to get a professional diviner out to look for groundwater. This is usually done with a couple of L-shaped rods where they'll either open up or cross over to indicate a groundwater stream edge. This method is a debated topic because it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it's something that's been around since at least the 1500s and so far, there doesn't seem to be a more effective method that modern day technology has made readily available. There is, however, a database by the Bureau of Meteorology that can show you all registered bores in Australia, which helps to determine the likelihood of finding groundwater in your area. We made an entire video about divining and using the Australian Groundwater Database, and you can click the link on the screen now or in the video description to learn more about the process of finding groundwater. And so here we have the truck getting set up to start drilling. The rig elevates it to a vertical position and there's a couple of stabilizer legs on the bottom to ensure that the level of the truck remains the same and so that the bore is drilled straight down instead of on a slant. And something I haven't seen until we had our bore drilled is that this setup had a separate truck with a massive air compressor on it. Here is an image of a similar setup to give you an idea of what was located inside that big box on the truck. It's a giant cat engine used for the sole purpose of creating enough air pressure to push the material being drilled with the auger all the way to the top of the bore hole. And when you're drilling tens or even hundreds meters deep, it takes a lot of pressure to bring the drilled material all the way up. The process of drilling a bore hole is not too different to using a power drill, but in this case, the drill bit is connected to the rotary head with rods that are hollow inside. This is to allow air to flow through the rods and through the drill bit at the bottom, so that while the drill bit is loosening the material being dug out, air shoots out of it to bring that dug up material to the top. The other thing of course is that the drilling rods are only about 6 meters or 20 feet long and the depth that the diviner estimated for our well was about 36 meters or 120 feet. So in this clip you'll see how extra rods are added on. To add an extra rod a locking plate is inserted at the bottom of the rod that's just been sunk locking it in place. Then the direction of the drilling reverses and the rotary head unscrews from the rod. It then rises all the way back up to the top where another rod is added from the carousel or as you'll see later in the video, they can also be winched up from the truck tray. And lastly, the bottom of the new rod screws into the top of the bottom rod and the process continues. And this sequence is something that repeats for the entire drill process. At this stage, we can see some water mixed in with all of the sand being dug out but this part was nothing to get excited about. Water was just added in with the air that was pushed through the drilling rods to help lubricate and extract the material. Sometimes drilling a bore is straightforward, but a lot of the time you can run into challenges and the challenge with our site was that the entire way down all we had was sand. And what that meant was that the hole was collapsing in on itself, just like if you were drilling through dry sugar. In this clip, you can see the rig really struggling with all of the sand that was piling up. But finally, we hit bedrock at about 30 meters or 100 feet deep. 
Hitting bedrock is a really promising sign for finding groundwater. But because we were working in sand, it meant that before we could drill through the bedrock, we needed to drive down almost 30 meters of steel casing, which would essentially mean doubling the cost of this bore well project without a real guarantee that drilling further would mean finding water. So at this point, we had a really difficult decision to make and we essentially had two options. Number one was throwing in the towel before spending any more money and just accepting that we'll have no access to water. And if this hole was to be considered a test bore, the cost of drilling would be less than if we hit water, but it would still end up being around $4,000. And on the land, water is life. And we knew that if we didn't try, we would forever be wondering what would happen if we took a chance. So we decided to not give up and to go ahead with driving in the steel casing and taking the risk. After having an entire weekend to think this over, we stayed firm in our decision to keep trying in the hope of finding water. And in this clip, you can see the borehole being drilled all over again, just in case it collapsed over the weekend. This meant sinking down another five whole rods and pulling them out all over again. Then, after having drilled this bore twice by this point, it finally came time to insert the steel casing. And to do this, the operators installed the hammer drill attachment to hammer the steel casing all the way down to the bedrock. And the process of pushing the casing down ended up being the easy part, at least from what I could see. Because to join five lengths of steel casing, the top of each one had to be welded onto the bottom of the next length. The way this was done was by first welding three support brackets to the top of the sunken pipe so that the piece above it can be more easily aligned and stays in place while it's welded. And here you can see the guys adding the next length of casing and being really careful to make sure that everything aligns nicely. With Harry's expert welding skills, we knew that we were in good hands. And here is an example of what the finished product looked like. After driving the steel casing nearly 30 meters down, we hit bedrock again. And now it was time to remove the jackhammer attachment and to sink those five rods down all over again to be able to now drill through to the bedrock. So here we fast forwarded to the part where we were now drilling through the sandstone bedrock. And even though this might seem exciting for some of you guys, for us this was one of the biggest risks we've ever taken and the anticipation and suspense was just crazy on this day. By this point, Sarah was praying to the universe and I felt like time halted to a stop. It's almost like we could feel that something amazing was to happen and the next thing we knew, water was bursting out of the bore and we knew that we had all succeeded. And after finally reaching the aquifer, the next thing was to drill a sump, which is optional, but what this does is provide a space for any sediment to settle in and also creates a bit of a buffer between the standing water level and where the pump is located.
As a quick visualization for what a sump does, here is a simple diagram of a confined aquifer where you can see the different layers of soil that were drilled through and then the aquifer that we tapped into. The standing water level is higher than the point where we hit water because the aquifer being confined by bedrock extends to a height that's different to where we are accessing the water. Which is actually a really good thing because it basically means that we'll have a lot of water to use. And as a quick check-in for anyone who saw our last video about the divining, to answer the question of how accurate the professional diviner's estimate was, here is a picture of the peg that he knocked in saying 120 feet, which is equivalent to about 36 meters. And this is basically spot on with where you guys saw water bursting out of the well. The other thing that he mentioned was a flow rate of about 50 liters per minute and this also ended up being spot on. You'll see later in the video how we determined the flow rate of the well. And now here we are with the drill bit at the bottom of the sump where the guys are about to blow air down the bore through the rods and out the drill bit to wash out the sediment from the bore and also to check flow rate. It's really cool how this rig works because the air pressure drives the hammer drill, pushes out the material to the top, and then tests your flow rate as well, without needing to sink any extra line into the bore. The flow rate test is basically a bucket test where we timed how long it took to fill a 15 litre bucket with bore water. With some simple mathematics we found out that the bore can provide a flow rate of about 50 litres per minute which was a phenomenal result and one that our bore pump wouldn't even be able to keep up with. And just like that, our bore well project was wrapping up. Now we were pulling out the steel rods for the last time and here's also where you can see off-grid city couple pretty happy about the outcome. We aren't normally ones to take many risks in life, but this is one where we're glad that we took a chance on and now we can grow veggies and green up our mound. And a massive thank you to Harry and Tristan from Aquaport Drilling for changing the future of our farm. You guys are legends. After the rods were all out, in much the same way, all of the PVC bore casing was dropped in and glued at each junction. And at the bottom of the PVC casing, there were some slots cut in with an angle grinder and an inlet point at the bottom to allow water to seep into the casing without letting in too much sediment. And for anyone wondering about the steel casing that was sticking out a bit too high, that was cut with an oxyacetylene torch. And lastly, to cover off the costs involved in drilling a bore, this is not a cheap exercise, but when you're on a farm in a drought without running water, you quickly realize just how precious this resource is. And of course, the costs are different based on how deep you'll need to drill and whether like us, you may need steel casing. As a rough estimate, to drill a bore and drop in the PVC casing, it costs about $200 per meter, including GST which isn't too heavy of a burden. But if you're unlucky with sandy soils like we were, the steel casing cost about $300 per meter, including the welding and all of that kind of stuff. So this is really something that blew the cost out of the proportions that we were hoping for. So yes, we succeeded at finding water and we're stoked about it. And also, if you've noticed that in the latest videos, we've been trying to get things done for free, this is why, with all of our money now in farm infrastructure, it's slowly making us more resourceful and teaching us to think differently to make things happen. Like using repurposed star pickets as solar panel framing for installing the bore pump. Which by the way, you'll learn all about in the next video. In the next episode, we'll share with you our entire DIY solar bore pump install from start to finish the troubles we ran into and how we succeeded in setting up the system all on our own. And as always, if you guys find value in our videos, don't forget to like, comment or subscribe to see some more cool off-grid projects. Uh.
All right, you guys. We've got the boar all the way down there, about 160 meters. And we're filling up this pond so Rufus can keep swimming in it. Just kidding. It's our water reserve for now. What do you say, Sarah? I am very excited. Can't wait to test the water and hopefully we can drink the water. How many days did it take us to set this up? This is day four. Day four. I am hot and I am tired. Four days. But I am excited. It's like 100 degrees right now. Maybe not 100, maybe 40, but it's hot, it's humid. It took us four days to set this up. It's working. <laughs> Look at that. It's looking a lot clearer. It's clear as.